Hey, I'm Paula Williams. I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... I help you folks out there in the aviation world sell more of your products and services and keep your people happy. <laughs> exactly. What you need to do in order to sell more products and services, right? Exactly, right. Okay. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, how and why to start your own Skunk Works project, which may be your own career, right? Could be. It could be. Um, so, you know, the last two episodes we talked about um, quiet quitting and skunk works. Um, we talked about some of the history of different skunk works at different organizations and how it has a long and illustrious and noble history in United States history and in aviation history mm -hmm. as well. And it's really contributed to a culture of innovation and other things that I think um, has kind of fallen by the wayside during some of the things that have happened more recently, like the pandemic and, and things like that. Yep. People are feeling burnt out, people are um, feeling overworked and underpaid and underappreciated and everything else. And, you know, there's been some news about quiet quitting where people just put in the minimum um, of clocking in, clocking out, doing what they have to to not get noticed. <laughs> which I think is just soul-sucking and horrifying for everybody involved, because if you've ever had an undemanding job, you know that that is the worst fate a human being can yeah. have. But if you have one of those, mm -hmm. if you think, sit back and think at your coffee break mm -hmm. about all the stuff going on and where you could make an impact and not tell anybody until it's done, mm -hmm. without uh, costing money and without yeah, you're putting in the time anyway. So you want to think about um, what can you do that is good for you and good for the company at the same time. Um, so what we want to go back to is the concept that you cannot depend on your job for fulfillment and to fulfill every need that you have and to appreciate every idea you come up with and uh, to be to plan your career and to make you happy. That just isn't going to happen, no matter what your job is. Even if it's your own company, you can't expect your job to do that. Nope. Um, so take that control back from HR or from your boss and um, figure out for yourself, you know, what is your next step? Do you want to be at the same company doing something different? Do you want to be at a different company doing something different? Do you want to um, start a company of your own? Uh, do you want to be a supplier to your current company or a contractor to your current company? There's all kinds of options. Oh yeah, you know, what would be your ideal situation and lifestyle given your preferences and predilections and um, you know, everything else that you have to choose from? Um, you know, you always have a choice. In my opinion, I think the term quiet quitting is offensive because Every day you get up in the morning and you decide, am I doing this or am I not doing this? And if you're doing this, you owe it to Do yourself, it. your employer, and everybody else Do it right. in your life to give it everything you got. Yep. Um, so, you know, you're and, either... And you can change job because mm -hmm. I went through a period in my life where I changed jobs on an air on average of every two to two and a half years. Exactly. Um seven or eight job changes mm -hmm. and the reason was because i wasn't doing up to what i thought my potential was mm -hmm. i wasn't getting paid what i thought i should have been paid mm -hmm. so every time i changed mm -hmm. my responsibilities went up i got uh, what i thought was a substantial raise in pay mm -hmm. and then that would go on for about two years and then i mean you know You'd get a nice time. raise in pay the first year you were there, and the second year would be a little bit less. The third year, if you less, if you did that, after the first time being there three years, it dropped too low. I said nuts. So mm -hmm. I changed jobs. I got that raise plus more, mm -hmm. got more responsibility, and I kept doing it. Right. Listen, we both worked for big companies, small companies, oh, in between yeah. companies, and you can complain about how they don't appreciate you or how they're not paying you enough or how they, it's plateaued, da, 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 da. You, you could just stay at the same job for 10 years and complain about the fact that they're just not treating you well or you can change, right? Yeah, I mean, I talked to my dad about it when I first, because he started sweeping floors at a particular company mm 
Mm-hmm. And in 35 years, he ended up being the number two guy in a worldwide organization. He said, you can't do that anymore. No, no, no. He said, don't even, don't even think about it. Yeah. Use each company as a stepping stone to the next. Exactly. Which so. means you learn everything you can where you are, and then you look around at where you want to go next and go, bang. Right. Pull the trigger and do it. So you want to think about yourself as your own Skunk Works project, right? Mm-hmm. So your job is a means to an end, right? It is not supposed to be the end all and be all of your existence exactly. or even of your career. No. Um, so, you know, you want to think about that from, from that perspective. So do you want to stay at the same company? Do you want to go to a different company? Do you want to create your own startup or side hustle? Um, whatever it is, um, I really recommend, and we work with a lot of people who work for other companies, you know, and we will never tell. <laughs> it's completely confidential um, if they're working with us on developing a product or developing a, a company or whatever the situation is. And what I always advise them to do is to set a date. Um, and that might be two years in the future, five years in the future, um, 90 days in the future, whatever you can stand and whatever you think you can manage and say, okay, I'm not going to be working at this job forever. That instantly takes the pressure off. And so then you're not in Dante's infinite circle of clocking in and clocking out, right? You know, you've got a time limit. You're going to do this for two years or whatever the situation is. And you've got a set of tasks that you want to accomplish while you're there. Um, So, you know, you need to put together your plan. If it's two years, if it's five years, if it's 90 days, here's what I need to do. I need to learn these skills. I need to develop this network at these companies that, you know, maybe we do business with. I need to earn this much money to fund a startup. I need to put together some tools like a website or a LinkedIn profile. In fact, I went to several bosses and said, okay, I'm doing this and I'm good at this. Mm -hmm. What I want to be able to do is this. What do I have to do so that I can get promoted or take on responsibility to do that? Mm -hmm. And they would always say, you got to do this, this, and this, or you can't hear. And then I would change jobs right you know but but you can find out what's required for whatever you want your next step to be right and so you know if your list includes a certain number of skills then you want to volunteer for the projects that need that skill Mm -hmm. Um, if you need um, a network at a certain company that your your business does business with then you want to be on those projects where you're meeting the right people um, Mm -hmm. at that other company um, a supplier or a um, a client of your company or whatever. If you need to make a certain amount of money, you need to ask your boss, you know, what do I need to do to get a raise? Um, you know, this really puts a spring in your step, you know, when you have uh, a set of tasks that you have defined for yourself um, about things that you need to do in order to be successful. And if your boss says you can't, you won't, I'm not going to do it, anything else, then you know what you got to do. Exactly. You put your Hand out for the next company that comes along that's got what you want and you leave. Yeah, and you get your resume polished up and you start looking for opportunities that will let you get these things accomplished. And the majority of bosses that have a clue Mm -hmm. want somebody they can groom to take their place so they can get promoted. Or, um, you know, like we do, we actually are very open about this. You know, every one of our team members should have other clients and should have stuff outside of our business. They're not really employees, they're team members. Exactly, and we actually will help them Mm -hmm. create an LLC and obtain more clients so that they actually do well. Exactly, so their success is our success. Mm -hmm. Your boss, your results may vary. (laughs) So (laughs) your mileage may vary. Um, If your boss is not on board with this, then you're gonna have to find options to get this done. And if that's taking night classes, if it's finding a side hustle to make more money, um, you know, whatever you need to do to get this task list accomplished, your boss may or may not help, and you may or may not feel comfortable talking to your boss um, yeah. about any of this. And as an or example, telling them why, you know. I mean, <laughs> I was in a consulting gig for a company for quite a number of years, and I thought I needed an MBA. Mm-hmm. So I took all the appropriate tests and as it happened, I was able to do it on every other Friday or Saturday. Mm-hmm. And it was all day long, mm-hmm. 18 months, and I could fly into from wherever I needed to. As it happened, I was on projects that 
almost made it all the way through. Mm -hmm. So it was the last month I didn't make it, so I had to do what I had to do. But I got the MBA. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Check right off the task list. Yeah, and uh, I've done a number of things I wouldn't have been able to do without it. But that that's personal. And all I'm saying is you can do anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, it may not be as simple or as easy uh, as you think. But if you have a date and you have a task list, that will make your job a whole lot more meaningful, mm -hmm. even if there is some drudgery involved and every job has drudgery, right? <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, and that's just the way it is. Another thing that you're going to be doing in the process is you're going to be building a tribe. Um, and people that you meet today are likely to be also be people that help you years in the future. So, you know, from the many jobs that I've had in my many, many years on this planet, um, a lot of the people that I've met um, still help me out with things that they know about and, you know, uh, um, things that are in their area of expertise. Um, in fact, uh, my son, Mickey, he has a consulting company or a, a tutoring company. He hired a person who used to be his boss um, at a corporate job. She now has a side gig doing um, social media management. Um, he hired her. He used to report to her. Now he hired her <laughs> and is paying her to do this um, for his company. So a lot of the people that you're meeting now, you want to put that in, in the back of your mind. You know, who can help me if I were to build my ideal team in my new company, my new side hustle, my new job, my new whatever? What network of people do I need? Um, do I want to keep around, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, build those relationships with so that uh, I have people that I know, like, and trust that are going to make my life easier in the future? What we're talking about is easy to glom onto intellectually. Mm -hmm. What you have to do once you've done that is to make it work emotionally. Mm -hmm. Without that, you're right there where you were before you started listening to this. Right. And, you know, so the next Zoom meeting that you have to take that you are dreading, um, if you suddenly, suddenly start seeing all of these faces on the screen as potential partners in your future situation, uh, it changes the way you look at people and okay. it changes the way they see you because you are, you're presenting yourself differently. That's right. Yeah. You'll dress up a little better. You'll get involved in a conversation. You'll have some good points to make. Mm -hmm. It all builds on itself without even trying once you make a decision. Right. And then it's better for your company while you're there, whether you're there for two years, five years, right. three months. Um, you are putting in 100% mm -hmm. uh, because you're working towards something for yourself. And... Uh, all right. Another thing that you can do, no matter where you are in your career or anything else, is start building your personal brand. You know, what are the things that you are good at and that you want to be known for? And you can start publishing articles or videos or uh, anything that you like about, you know, here's a problem that I've noticed in the industry and here's a solution. Um, anybody at any level in any company can do that, even if it's, you know, here's how you um, clean out a locker room without, uh, you know, spending more than 30 minutes. And you don't have to represent your company when you do it. You can do it on your own dime. Exactly. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you want to look at your employment agreements very carefully and consider your employment agreements very carefully and make sure that you're allowed to do this. Uh, and not on a company machine or hardware or network. Exactly. So you want to do that, make sure that you're doing this on your own time, on your own computer and everything else. But Otherwise, there's no need to do that. But if you're going to work, like we talked about earlier, on a Skunk Works project, mm -hmm. nobody's going to complain once you get finished mm -hmm. by using their own computers. Right. Um, there's a, a quote about, uh, you know, losers are always blamed. Winners are, you know, always get the credit. So that's, uh, if your project is successful, every Skunk Works project is a risk. Um, but what you need to do is consider the risk in proportion. Um, I think a lot of people feel that their boss has a lot more power than they actually do. Uh, a lot of people feel that their boss may be more antagonistic than they actually are. Uh, so, you know, you want to look at this carefully and be cautious about how much of your future planning you want to share with your boss. In some cases, they're going to be 100% on board and do everything they can to bend over backwards and help you get where you want to go. In more 
frequent cases, well, okay, other cases, they're going to do everything that they can to stand in your way, but there's only so much that they can do, um, you know, during your work time and everything else. Um, the reality is almost always somewhere in the middle. Your boss may or may not have secu- insecurities about you doing whatever it is that you do, but they can't prevent you from doing a lot of the things that you want to do. Um, but yeah, you do want to be cautious and be cognizant of, of consequences to, of your actions, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That said, do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, every action has some risk to it. But the worst risk, I think, is quiet quitting for 40 years and then retiring. I mean, that's not a life. That is not a career yeah, no action is sort of like not playing office politics. The only losers are those that don't play. Right. So. And yeah, I mean, I think that's everybody's worst nightmare. In fact, when I was talking to you know my son about what he wanted to do when he grew up and everything else, his biggest fear was being stuck in a cubicle for 40 years and then retiring. Um, and he has managed to avoid that in so many ways. <laughs> um, that it's not even funny, but it's because he is taking risks uh, and I think, you know, a lot of us need to be a lot more afraid of not taking risks. Calculated risks. Yes. And uh, well-planned steps uh-huh. uh, in the right direction, having a plan, um, not acting precipitously, but saying, you know, here's what I can do. Here's what's within my sphere of, uh, within my employment agreement right now. Um, here is a date by which I'm going to be done with that. Here's what I can do to build up to my next step, whatever that is. But he's got a good consultant. You. He does. <laughs> and now I have a good consultant because he's done a lot of things I would like to do. So that's very, very cool. And I also have you. So that makes it a whole lot easier. And if you've got family, friends, mentors, anything else that uh, um, that helps you, this makes this so much easier and more fun. So, you know, oh, yeah. the first thing on your list of steps is probably to build a tribe and to find a kindred spirit um, who can help you on this path, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And whether that's somebody you work with, somebody you live with, somebody you in your family, out of your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Right. Start building that tribe of people rooting for you and people that are in your corner. Um, And that might include us. Yeah, it could. (laughs) Right. Um, We do help people with startups. We do help people with um, side hustles uh, and other things. If it's in the aviation industry, we can at least give you a consultation and see if it's something that we can help you with. Or if you're not ready yet, we can at least give you some thoughts about maybe um, some possible next steps. First startup is my fourth or fifth one I've tried to help with. Right? <laughs> so how are we doing so far? If the first one crashed and burned. <laughs> By the fourth, or fifth, we're quoting Top Gun, of course, like everybody quotes Top Gun. Yeah, no, we're doing good. We're doing good? Mm-hmm. Cool. I'll tell you what the fiscal quarter or whatever you want to say. (laughs) I'll tell you in Monday's finance meeting (laughs) how we're doing. Right. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, It's been a pleasure uh, talking with you about uh, making this your own project. And uh, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to help if we can. Yes. Talk to you soon.